Welcome to this tutorial series teaching how to use Storyboarder. Storyboarder is free software. You can download it on Windows, Linux, and Mac. I'll be demonstrating it on Windows today. Uh, if you don't already have it downloaded, check out the other video where I show how to do that. When you first launch Storyboarder, it looks like this. And so we have an option to open an existing project. I have two that I've created in the past. And then we can create a new storyboard. So you'll probably want to do that in the bottom right hand corner. Click Create New Storyboard. It brings up this dialogue that says, do you want to use an existing script? Maybe you have a, a script with dialogue of characters talking to each other. You could do that. If not, just do what I'm going to do here and click Create a Blank. And then it asks you what the aspect ratio is. What is the size of the screen you'd like this to be displayed on? Is it going to be in a theater like this wide or ultra wide? Is it going to be on the HD TV, this 16 to 9 ratio? Um, so choose your, I'll just choose a 16 to 9 HD. And then we're going to choose where to save it. Maybe I'll put mine on the desktop and I'll call it um, TJ Story and click Create. So it's going to create a project on my desktop like this a folder. And then let me resize this real quick so we can see it within the screen here. This is what the interface looks like when we very first uh, start in our project. We have some different tools across the top we can use for drawing. If we hover over these tools, it tells us what they are. This is like the light pencil. We can left click to select it, and then we can see what light pencil looks like. We, at the end here we have, if we hover over, this is an eraser. We can left click eraser, and then left click and hold, and we can erase some of that. This is our canvas that we're drawing on. This is where we'll draw like our scene or our frame. And at the bottom here, we can see when we make changes to that, when we draw something on here, it appears in this little tiny little thumbnail in the bottom left hand corner. If we want to advance to the next frame, we just click this plus icon and we move to the next frame. So we can grab a different tool here and we notice these have different thicknesses and they, they look different, they have different colors. We can change the color up here and we can actually change the, the thickness of the lines as well. But go ahead and play with some of these. Click on all of them, hover over them, see what they are. This pastel is pretty nice. It's sort of light and has a little bit of texture to it. We can zoom in there and see what that looks like. It has a nice texture. Uh, so some really great tools there. And like I said, we can change the color up here. If we want this pastel to be a different color, we left click. It comes up with different colors. We can select and choose a different color and start working in that color. Uh, if we want to change, let's go to something more like the pencil here. If we want to change the thickness of this pencil, we can do that up here. We just go this part that says 20. We hover over and left click and we can move to the right to increase it or the left to decrease it. That's the size. So let's set this all the way up to 100 and see how big that is. So we see that's a lot bigger now with this pencil. Uh, this is the opacity. So let's grab something a little bit um, harder. So this orange one now, if we turn down the opacity to maybe 25%, we see it's a little bit not as strong. So we can turn this way down low and just have it be much, much lighter. So even these individual uh, tools, we can customize and change a little bit by changing the size and the opacity. If we want to erase everything on our drawing, we, we could just grab the eraser and slowly go through and erase, but that's very time consuming. To erase everything, we can just click this icon up here, this little uh, trash icon, and that will delete everything on our canvas. These other icons up here are to move and to scale our drawing. So if we draw something, maybe we draw just a smiley face here and we want to move it around, we can grab this tool, which puts us in move mode when it's selected. So now we're in move mode. We can left click and hold and move this around. But what it's really doing is moving everything in our on our canvas or in our board. So if we left click, we go out of move mode before we can draw again and we draw some different things over here. Well, then we try to, if we want to move again, we go back into move mode and it'll move everything on the entire canvas. If we want to just move one thing, we have to select just that one item. But first let's look at the scale. So scale is going to work the same way. If we go into scale mode, it's going to scale the entire drawing, not just the part that we're clicked over top of. Now, if we want to move something individually, we can lasso it. So we click the lasso tool. And if you hover over lasso, it actually has a lot of different functionality and options that we'll be learning about later as well. But for now, just know we can left click and hold and select a certain area. And then we can move just everything within that selection. So it works well if you have things separated from each other. You have to be kind of careful because you can accidentally cut out different parts and it would be, you know, do exactly maybe something you don't want to do. You can always hit Control Z to undo. Oh, but maybe not in this case. Edit undo. Okay. 
Oh, there it did it. Oh, what you can do with with the lasso, I didn't commit that change, so you can hit escape with the lasso tool. But Control Z will usually undo your last your last change. I guess within the lasso tool, maybe Control Z doesn't work. Um, also, the lasso you can like lasso a certain area and press F to fill with a certain color. You can lasso a certain area and hit the delete key to just delete everything within there. So there's a lot of functionality. So play with that a little bit. Um, but Storyboarder is really set up for just doing quick edits. So you'll quickly, you know, draw draw something. It's going to be just like a rough thing to kind of figure out what's going on. And then what you do, it has this button up here for like export into Photoshop, or, or you can do it in GIMP or Krita. So you kind of offload this to another program that you'll use to actually build your scene if you're doing animation, or to to work off of where to set up your camera and how to how to create your scene if you're recording something um, in real life. But I think I'm going to stop this video here. Let's go ahead and just learn about the project real quick. If we click File, Save, that's just going to save in the project that we already created. And so now if we were to minimize this, we can see it's saved here. We saved it on the desktop. We can open and see what's happening here. And it has a folder for our images. Let me just view this a little bit larger. We have a folder for images, and then we have our actual project. Our project is this uh, TJ Story. It's a dot storyboarder is the file extension. And so that'll only open in Storyboarder. But then the images it shows is all the different things we've drawn. We have our individual X that we drew here once. We have all these individual things that we've drawn individually if you want to grab a certain part of it. Or we have uh, our complete boards as well. So just know all the, the information for the file is saved in this images folder. And as we export and do more with it, um, this folder is going to grow. So that is the, the folder there. And if we were to close out of Storyboard, we can always uh, relaunch it by just clicking on what it was called, or we can launch it by just going here and clicking on the storyboard project file. Uh, well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, we'll learn more about using Storyboarder to do our uh, to create a basic animation, which is something that uh, you can use Storyboarder for. So leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.